Hey, what's up? Welcome to this happy day at the worm. I believe it is finally move-in day. It's been just about uh, three years, I believe. Been living out here in the forest, mostly by myself. When I got out here, there was nothing, just forest. And I just wanted to see how long it'd be fun to uh, stay out here, build stuff, camp, do whatever, day to day, just decide each morning what, what I wanted to do. And it's a freaking riot. I lived here pretty much on this tent platform for what, two and a half years-ish? And then just, I don't know, a couple months ago, I moved into this. And this I built uh, as a tool shed. It's about 100 square feet, no insulation or anything. After building this and some other structures around here, my beautiful shower, everything, uh, all with lumber on the property here with the chainsaw mill, I decided it was time to build a cabin. So it's right, can you see, look, it's right there. And the cabin is finally finished enough to move into. Uh, the last couple things I had to do on it were to uh, build a bed, a transformery bed, and uh, build a bunch of shelves in here. Still gonna need a lot more shelves. But isn't this thing nice? Can you believe you could build something like that just with a chainsaw and a bunch of trees? I hate to say it, hate to use the word, but it's it's kind of cute, isn't it? So we've got some weird shelves put in. That's all uh, two inch, really cool looking cedar that I saved just for this. Same with the uh, giant L desk there. So today, I mean, the reason I wanted this giant desk was to be able to keep my computer out somewhere to edit these videos and both my microscopes out. So today's the day I get to move my frozen microscopes from the man cave into here, get them set up where they're gonna live. And then also at some point, I'll have to make the run out and grab my 3D printer because I wanna keep that on the desk here too. I have a feeling I'm gonna be taking loads from here into the man cave and the man cave into here back and forth. And I know as I get more of my kind of personal living stuff in here, coolers and clothes and guns and stuff like that, I'm going to need more storage space. So I really just have two little shelves there and that one weird shelf over there. If I take all these tools out of here, I bet by the end of the day I'm going to have to bring them all back just to make a few more shelves or, you know, boxes for gloves or whatever, whatever kind of storage. But I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to drag most of everything out of here and we'll get it all switched over. So today's the day. It took one year. That should be proof that if you're nuts enough and you want to do it, you can build yourself a less than 200 square foot cabin in one year by yourself with just battery powered hand tools and uh, some chainsaws and chainsaw mill. If you're thinking about doing it, you're thinking, hey, that sounds kind of fun. That's why I'm watching this. You should, you should definitely try it. I mean, so what? If you buy some property, you go out there, you do it for a month, you don't like it, then don't do it anymore. Go find something else to do. But it's possible. It can be done. I don't know what I'm doing and I'd still put it together. That planer should go in the man cave. Unfortunately, you guys probably saw the last video. Like a couple days ago, I did that weird, this insulation in the floor. And I kind of forgot about my uh, weird busted rib. I made it quite a bit worse. It's, it's been, I don't know, a month or a month and a half since I broke it. And it was quite a bit better until I crawled around here. So I don't know, that thing's like, that plane is like a hundred pounds. So I might have to drag it out, set on the steps and then bring the four wheeler over to drive it a hundred feet to the man cave. Well, let's just get it out of here. Look how uh, jam packed this place is. I know it's always too dark in here to really film, but I'm gonna be able to get all my clothes out of here. And for the first time, I'll get this bedding stuff out of here and this folds up. So this place is going to be like a third bigger than what I'm used to. Got my microscopes to drag out of here. This is the uh, the man cave, so it should probably have the uh, ammo. And I'll leave some of my uh, firearms in here. I think that one just looks really nice on the wall, so it should probably stay here. Let's see, all these tools are going to stay in here. And when I get some of this other junk out, I'll have room to keep all my battery powered tools in here. That burner I only use for making coffee in the morning, so we'll get that out of here. Coffee stuff. Ooh, my oil lamp. That's definitely gonna go in the cabin. We'll hang that. Oh yeah, it does have a hanger upper. We'll put that on the wall. Yeah, let's get all this bedding out of here first. <laughs> I just had to spend a half hour vacuuming the walls in the cabin. 
because you know all the boards in there because <laughs> I'm a big dummy I mill the boards just stack them in a pile one on top of each other and then sometimes they sit there for a while they get rained on snowed on and you guys saw in some earlier videos like they were a sheet of ice not that the wood is frozen but it was actually ice on it so I put them all up anyway and you know they were covered in sawdust mashed into the ice and everything and I put them up and just never got never even thought about like cleaning them but I just went and put a shirt on a hook in there I brushed it and like all sorts of sawdust fell down and I looked and the entire wall all the walls were just caked in sawdust so I took two uh drill batteries and my little uh my little shop vac uh, with a hose on it that's about this long, but I got all the walls clean. All right, now for the exciting part. Let's fold this thing up forever, almost forever, for a while. Actually, it'll probably stay folded up for as long as it takes me to uh, get around to putting the, the ceiling in the cabin. I would really like to do that because when you look in there, it's starting to look really nice sort of finished and everything i think it'll look more finished when i get some stuff moved in there but then you have the ceiling that's just you know insulation but because i still have it in my head that i'm going to take the entire cabin the inside of it all the way apart plane it varnish it route the edges and all that stuff i just don't want to put the ceiling boards on so wall boards are like this and then the ceiling goes into it so basically you have to take all the ceiling down in order to get to the walls and in a lot of cases you'd have to keep the ceiling down to get to this wall so that you can get to this wall because they're like tucked back in there. It's just getting to be way too big of a puzzle. Plus, if I took the time to mill all those logs and put the ceiling up there, I basically have like a week to stay in the cabin before I move back into a tent for the spring and summer. So I'm just doing my best not to look up, not to notice it's just insulation. All right, let's get the, I sh I'm sure I could carry this stuff, but I probably better get the four wheeler to drag it over there. shortest move that's ever happened for somebody used a motorized vehicle. I can feel the rib moving. Oh, that's so gross. Not so painful, really gross. Oh, I'm so glad there's so much stuff to get out of here. This is going to be a great tool room workshop. Exhausted. That was a long one. This is the only thing in here that actually has a designated place. Everything else I'm going to have to make up. Should maybe do a bunch of uh, square nails in here for cords. Or maybe for the time I'll keep both the jackeries in here and I'll put... Yeah, we could hang cords over there. Oh, we got to figure out where to put the lamp and the... Uh, carbide lamp that I haven't gotten working yet. Kind of got to hang it sideways so you can't see the cool brass. Like that doesn't look like much. Ooh, how about right here? Did I already put the, oh no, I got the nails right here. But I don't think I, I think I put the hammers away. I'm only using the masonry nails because I think they look cool. Just classy, right? I don't really know what these shelves are for, but a can of carbide would look good right there. You guys haven't seen me in full decorating mode before, have you? That's that's because I've never done it. Gotta figure out where to put my oil lamp. Where would it shine the best light? Yeah, nice. And microscopes. Microscopes are so much fun, but they're really not any good if they're not out all the time. Just got a couple deer that love being around this area. They'll get up in the morning and they will have walked across my steps, you know, like five feet from where I'm sleeping. They also love uh, when I use the chainsaw. It's like they stand out in the woods when they hear the chainsaw rev up and watch and they wait. As soon as the tree falls down and I walk away, they come right in and munch. Yep, gonna need some more shelves. I think I'll definitely do like a floor to ceiling shelf here. Shelves that stick out and have sides are actually kind of helpful too because you could put 
a bunch of hooks on the side and hang crap on it. I mean, not crap, fine quality merchandise. I am definitely going to make, in the next day or two, a little tiny flip down thing here. Just to heat stuff. <laughs> I found half a bag of uh, tortilla chips I didn't know I had. So I've got some cans of my favorite lab cheese, uh, but they're frozen solid. So I stuck it up there for a little bit, but I'm hungry now. I need some place like hotter, and if it was right there, it'd be perfect. We'll definitely have to do that. I'm just going to eat this stuff frozen. I guess I can put my uh, 9 millimeter alarm system right there. That's handy. No, it's not completely frozen. It's liquid-ish. Also have to, uh, maybe later today, dig through my wood pile and see what I have for scraps. I'm thinking about putting at least one shelf, if not a double shelf, the entire distance underneath here. That would be a lot of extra storage. Like, I have uh, a bunch of those green one-pound propane bottles. I've got a ton of these because I used to run everything off of this until I went to 20-pound bottles and then went to 40-pound bottles. But this still runs stuff like my stove, so... That would be perfect underneath there. Oh yeah, there's lots of space for one or two shelves. Those chips are old, but uh, I'll use anything to get that luscious lab cheese out, frozen or not. Hurts the teeth. Nice place for my uh, old textbooks, anatomy and physiology, human biology, and of course my chainsaw catalogs. Gotta have a back massager and a back scratcher close at hand. One thing I gotta build, well a couple things. I'm gonna build a trash can for in here. I guess maybe I'll make it out of cedar board. Why not? This uh, I built in a hurry just because I needed something. This was inside my tent. You guys remember the giant orange tent? I think it was the first one I had on the tent deck. I might have used it for a summer and a half or two summers. But it was like a four-man tent. And then the vestibule was double that. So it was, it was a lot of a lot of square footage in there. This thing was on here to hold the inverter. So I used to have an inverter on there. And then I put my big car battery. That's what I was running my computer off for the first couple of years. I could rip that off of there. I might just take this thing apart and uh, run the hand planer over the sides of everything and make it uh, presentable. Oh, it fit perfectly right here. I could do that just until I get around to making a full bookcase there. Yeah, let's do that. The only problem is I'm gonna go to the trouble to clean it up. It would be nice to varnish it, but now having moved in here, I don't really have any place to dry stuff out. Well, actually I could varnish it, put it in the man cave and leave the heater on in there for a little bit. Uh, the two might be too full of garbage or maybe it's a different bit Aha. oh yeah we can get that apart i guess i just slapped this whole thing together without uh figuring out the back or anything so let's draw a line on here cut this off draw it down there do the same thing on that side these deck screws they're crazy expensive I certainly didn't buy them but they're amazing this has been outdoors just sitting at well like a deck would be for at least a couple years it looks brand new mustard screws they're amazing yeah I don't know if it's gonna be worth varnishing now just I must have I don't think I had very many uh, different size screws when I built this thing. I just somehow got a box of deck screws and I had to sink them way in to get everything pulled together because all the edges of this are just cut with a chainsaw too. But they were sunk so far in that when I pulled them out they chipped off all the board like that. Well I guess since there are no more tools over here we'll have to go do this at the man cave. We'll trim this off a little bit so it's not quite so chainsaw made.
come on, how could that not be fun to do? It's like painting in reverse. That wire wheel makes pretty quick work of freshening up those green live edges. Yeah, I'm starting to get dinner hungry. Can't be dinner. Holy cow. Six o'clock. <laughs> well, I guess I'll pound this thing back together now and then clean up a little bit, settle in for the night. Try not to mess with anything else or I'll be doing this until midnight. Nice cozy place this is. Little oil lamp light, little propane heat. Ah, oh, it's like heaven. Does that make your mouth water? Oh, I get so excited. Listening to my morning tunes. We'll talk soon. Uh, I was afraid this was going to need padding, but it feels great on my back. Just a slab of wood. It's soft wood, though. Well, it's already noon, and uh, I just decided since it's the first day in the cabin, I'm just going to chill in here and uh, burn up a bunch of propane. It's pretty amazing to sit at a desk and do this. Uh-oh. My editing program just crashed. Maybe you're not getting any videos from now on. It's a really pretty day today. Looks like it's calm and uh, sunny, so I always feel like I should be out working on something. I think I'm just going to do this for the day. And then I made a small list of stuff to do uh, tomorrow, all the stuff we already talked about. Need some kind of box for the gloves, the shelves, all that stuff. So, I don't know, you know, I guess we'll uh, just see you tomorrow unless I get motivated to go outside today, which I don't think that's going to happen. This is too much fun. Whew, had to run the generator and uh, charge all my stuff back up. It's been a weird day or two. Uh, right when I turned the camera off, uh, my graphics card, I don't know, died? did something weird. It took me the entire next day, which was yesterday, to get it working again. I think it's working. That's kind of freaky when you're trying to do a, put out a video, a long video every week, and all of a sudden, you know, you're out here and your computer stops working altogether. That can kind of be an end to the show real quick. Uh, it's, I gotta admit, it's pretty weird. There's a part of my brain that doesn't get being in here. Like the consistent heat, it really kind of messes with me. I mean, even staying in the man cave, which, you know, sort of has heat, you still, you know, you turn it on for a couple hours, you turn it off, it gets down to 20 degrees, and then, you know, you can warm it up a little bit, but this kind of like, yeah, consistent 60 degrees is really bizarre. I found out a couple of things in the last two days that are problems. One is even with the temperature, sort of consistent like I think I turn it when I turn it all the way down at night it's like 40 45 and then during the day like up to 60 my buckets uh, under the bed are still sweating I pulled one of them out and there was kind of a puddle underneath it it's not a bad bucket it might have been tipped a little bit but I felt the edges of all of them and they're sweating so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that I could almost get another set of lids and put a lid on the floor and then the bucket on top so you could slide it out I mean, I could put a tarp under there or something, but you can't slide one bucket out on top of a tarp. What I really need is a big piece of, like, slick plastic, thin plastic to lay on the floor. 
put a, like a screw in each corner and then the buckets would slide on and off. I don't know, we'll have to figure something out. Another thing, it's a problem, but it has an easy solution. This thing, oh, by the way, can you see the, I had to go out yesterday, so I got my 3D printer. We got it in here. Has been moving stuff around and finding even temporary homes for stuff. You know, there's like piles of sawdust, so I vacuum it out and then push all my junk in there. I vacuumed around this guy yesterday, and then just now went to put something in here, and there's a bunch of sawdust, like this bag that I just put in here uh, last night. My wishbones got bugs. <laughs> That's not a euphemism. You guys remember when I, I had to peel this thing? It was, it was pretty gnarly. Like underneath the bark was just real buggy. Uh, I peeled it off one day when it got. Actually, yeah, I had a hard time peeling it because it was frozen. And then one day it rained. Just enough of the ice melted that I could peel it. But, you know, I didn't see a whole lot of little holes or anything. Now that I look at it, every six or eight inches there's a big hole. There are those, uh, not arbor beetles, not pine. It may or may not come back to me. But, that's what's in there, so I'm like, oh crap, I'm gonna have to take this whole thing apart of here to take this out, but it's dried out and shrunk just enough that it's not even holding the weight of the counter, which is, I'm, I'm glad because I can get this out here, but also I was standing on this uh, to put the shelf up there and it didn't budge, and that's even without this support, so I guess we gotta get this thing out of here somehow. See the hole here, one there, one there, one there. There are just quite a few of them here and there. And you see this, it's a certain kind of sawdust that they're chewing out. I don't know if it's going all the way through the bug, but it, it's like strings, not just fine dust, but like strings of uh, wood splintery looking things. So in a way, I kind of don't mind not having this in there because it's a whole lot of extra space. I, mean, I do like the way it looks, but well, let's, let's make sure here. can't tell if there's flex in it or not. not a, I mean, I could certainly stand up here. How handy is that that it just pulled out? That would have been a real pain in the ass to get that out of there otherwise. Yeah, this would actually be a pretty sweet place for some shelves. Or even, if they could make like a corner cabinet in there. Well, I'm gonna go dig through the wood pile, see what we got. The cabinet with, the, with doors and everything would take me a little longer. I've only got basically a day, about a day now to build in whatever I want before the weather gets crappy or fantastic, depending on how you look at it. So let's see, I'm gonna do another glove box right here, 20-ish by six-ish by whatever, eight-ish. Oh, and you know what else I wanna try to do? I know, can't get to it all. It'd be cool to have a plug in here Clearly, if I'm going to keep this place for a long time and I'm going to live in here in the winter, uh, run an extension cord once a week through the window isn't the greatest idea. So I might have to make a better spot under either under the cabin for the generator or some kind of roof on the generator. And then just have one cord that plugs into it, runs maybe underneath the cabin into a plug. And then it could be wired through the wall and just have like one plug here. I guess I could have one or two plugs just for recharging the power tool batteries and the jackeries and stuff it'd be cool not to have to get a bunch of cords out every time but again not today not today let's see we got all sorts of good garbage under here this would be cool for the drying rack it's just the cut off uh pine maybe some pretty stuff for the glove box oh let's use the really pretty stuff the extra thin cuts from the logs uh, that I got all the shelving and the desk wood out of. I have a whole bunch of one inch cuts, those would be cool. Oh yeah, that'll work great. That's super, super pretty stuff. It's kind of warped, but uh, maybe I'll make the box and then try to flatten it out a little bit. Probably won't get around to uh, varnishing it until the summer because it stinks so bad. Wow, this might be too warped. Eh, doesn't matter if the front of the box has a bow to it. We'll just pretend like we meant to do it that way. Holy schmoly, that is awesome. This is going to be sweet. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
makes that noise when you do this. Ooh, ooh. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can fudge it to make it fit tight. Right there and right there. Better. That'll do. warped it's warped this way and this way instead of trying to straighten it out I'm gonna see if I can cut a curved line with a circular saw <laughs> never tried it before I could use a jigsaw but it doesn't sound like as much fun no problem Isn't that cool looking? Look at that stuff. It looks like stone. Glove box finished. Not quite sure how to make this microwave rack. I mean, I just need a square. And I'll put mesh on top of it. I want it to fold down. I don't want it to flex too much, but I also don't want it to stick out of the wall too much when it's folded up. I'd also like to not just make it out of something square. So this is an old wall brace. I don't know, maybe I'll just cut this into four pieces, stick it together and see if it'll actually be strong enough. It would also be cool if somehow it flipped down and just stayed there. Like I could put a little chain on it or something. I don't know, let's just put it together, see what happens. Unless I have something cooler to make it out of. Well, I guess that's just more of the same. Well, you know, the racks above it, the drying racks, are made out of the same stuff. I don't think this pine looks all that interesting, but let's try it. Yeah, I don't think that's going to have too much tweak to it. I guess we'll make this match the drying rack too, and I don't really like those hanger over corners. Sheesh, that sucker's dull. I could go get another one, a newer blade, but it's almost 100 feet away. up like that. So, put some hinges right about there.
How high should we go, do you suppose? Maybe right there. Oh, you'll be able to reach the thermometer. Therm thermostat of mama stat. I was going to put a chain on here to hold it up, but I could almost just shim it. <laughs> Fold up microwave. What a sweet idea. <laughs> Actually, let's just do the uh, little router trick on this. Butchered it a little bit, but I think that'll work. No, nope, it's a little better. Not quite there. I guess we'll route the wall then. Oh, perfect. Kind of like a planter box, except on the inside. Nice. I'll have to take all this stuff down. Probably do it all at the same time and varnish it in the man cave, turn the heater on for the day. That's going to work great. You guys remember uh, a couple years ago, a few years ago, Tito got me, I think it was for my, oh no, you might want that part. Uh, he got me a couple gumball machines, which I've, I don't know why I've always wanted, and one of them, I built a wooden box, screwed it to a tree out here, and made it so when I drive the four-wheeler by, I could just open the box and pull the little tray out and get some uh, peanut butter M&Ms or something, and it was there for, I think, less than a week, and one day I went up there and it was just gone. Assumedly, a bear ripped it off the tree and took off with it. I don't know. I just remembered yesterday that I have one more. And uh, it was really dirty. It was sitting in the uh, lean-to, so I just took it apart and scrubbed it. And uh, I'm going to dry it out, put it back together, and then maybe make a little shelf for it somewhere in here. So, if this would be a good use for this thing, right? We can make it dry really fast. Give her a couple minutes, stick it back together. So, I was supposed to have like a few hours this morning to do stuff before it started snowing. And uh, check the weather report, it's now all rain. It was supposed to be 12 to 14 inches of snow, starting right about now and through tomorrow noon. Zero snow. I mean, I guess the good thing is it's gonna be a little warmer, but I don't want warm, I want snow. But I did take time to clean the gumball machine out and I washed all the windows in here, plus the windows in the man cave, that's never been done. Got the dirt and filth and stickers and everything off. I didn't do my best work because I didn't have the exactly the right tools, but they look pretty good. It's not a horrible view. I did find out why this window, I think is the one I got, was brand new, but from the used building store. So it's got some scratches on here, but hey, who cares? It still looks pretty clean, doesn't it? Oh, it smells like uh, dish soap in here. So we used to clean the windows. <laughs> when you just walk in, it feels like there's no glass. I mean, they're astoundingly clean. Of course, usually windows have screens in them, so they don't ever look quite this clear. But I had to run down to the car to get some change. This is going to hugely slow me down on my almond M&M eating, because you actually have to put a some kind of coin in the machine. I didn't have any coins. You know, not a lot of use for uh, cash up here. But I got a pocket full of coins to see what fits in there. Maybe I'll just measure them. Probably what I'll do. Like, I guess I could just get a roll. But I could measure whatever coin works and then uh, 3D print out a bunch. I'm actually not completely sure if these will go through here. Let's find out. That better not be a quarter. It costs a quarter for M&Ms in here? <laughs> this thing's a ripoff. 
It's a quarter for one M&M. &M. <laughs> well, what if you put a penny in? It's also a penny for M&M's. Wonderful. Works great. Ooh. I got two in that twist. What a deal. Question is, where does all my money go? Aha. Lovely. I guess, oh, you know what this is? This is a money saving device. This is the best piggy bank I've ever owned. What? Oh, I'm out. Gotta go find more. Don't worry, I have more on hand. <laughs> Uh-oh, it takes two bags. I'll go get another bag. We better fill this up. This is like the best thing that ever happened to me. What a great way to save money. See, it pays to have four, five, six pounds of M&Ms on hand. Just in case you remember that you have a M&M dispenser, you're all set. Wow, that sucker holds a lot. It doesn't look like it. That's, uh, well, I guess that's only two pounds. <laughs> Looks like this video has gone plenty long enough. I was just dumping some of the videos off the camera. It's as good a place as any to stop to because it looks like the clouds are just rolling in. It'll probably start raining pretty soon. Didn't get the shelves underneath here yet. I think I'm going to rip all the window sills out of here and make them longer. And I'm also trying to imagine where would be a cool place to put the gumball machine. What I'd really like, probably, I don't know, maybe I'll do it. It'd be sweet. Oh yeah, you'd hit your knees on it. But it'd be really cool if it made something that like folded or swung out. Maybe swung out there. <laughs> But at very least, maybe we'll make a shelf right there and then have like an extra container I could put coins in. You know, I think I am going to have to print my own money for this. It'd be cool to make like plastic ringworm coins. And I still got, I'm pretty sure in my uh, dry bag here that I have some glow-in-the-dark uh, PLA plastic. That'd be really cool to print them out of. Actually, this printer has two print heads. I'll plug it in here so I uh, can turn the light on. Printer's kind of full of garbage right now, but let's see. I don't know if you can see here. Oh, I got one of them taken out of there, one of the extruder tips, but you can put uh, two different plastics in here, so print two colors at the same time. So yeah, maybe we'll have to print some coins. Uh, looks like you fit quarter size, maybe like quarter size coins in a couple different colors, like glow in the dark and I don't know, red, or see what else I've got in there. That would be really cool, and then have a separate tray just for a bunch of the coins. It's just never-ending fun projects out here. If you guys are interested in 3D printing at all, I think I, I did do a video, I don't know, maybe it was a year ago or something, uh, 3D printing some propane nozzles. Actually, it wasn't a nozzle, it was like a grip, so you could uh, tighten the propane hose into whatever you're hooking it to. I did that, had the 3D printer set up in the man cave for that video. I'll put a link in here and I'll put it in the description too. So, come on back next Saturday morning if you like. It's just, just gobs of fun stuff to do. This is actually really enjoyable to me. I mean, I like all of it, but when you get into like doing a building, an entire building, it's just a ton of work to cut the trees, mill all the lumber, like just for one wall, just to do the outside or the inside of one wall. And this kind of stuff is like, you know, build a weird shelf like this thing. And, but you could do it in a day, you know, maybe two days if you've got to mill the lumber. So this is really cool, like the customizing of the cabin now that I've kind of moved in here. I mean, normally when somebody moves in, you know, you've got to go buy a new end table or you need some storage bins or whatever. And out here, we've got trees, we've got logs sitting there, we've got chainsaw mills. Just make all our own lumber. It's like you need a garbage can, you just make one. So cool. So satisfying. So enjoyable. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you next week if you care to come back. You don't have to. You just, just do whatever you want to.